Castle Con, where we review everything geek. Today we'll be reviewing the first bow and arrow to make it into the Castle Con armory. Yes, this is the bow of Tariel the Elf from The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, and Battle of Five Armies. Oh wait, Christian, Tariel, is that the elf that, you know, was in The Hobbit movies but not the books? The one that was involved in this crazy love triangle between Legolas, another character not in the books but in the movies, and Killy, the dwarf? What is with this? Why, how can you be reviewing this bow? Aren't you a purist? Well, even if you don't like a character, you can still love a fine piece of art, a good replica. With that said, the character's alright, I'm okay with the additions, few things we could change, but moving on, prop it is, absolutely awesome bow, and let's get into the review here. Alright, so a little about this bow. This bow is 48 inches long, it is about 14 inches wide, I guess if we measure from here to here. Uh, we've got that. We also have an arrow that it comes with. The arrow is 42 inches long, has a nice design all the way down. And of course, like all of the United Cutlery products, it does come with a beautiful plaque, actually one of the most beautiful plaques I've ever seen, as well as its certificate of authenticity, of course, describing the lore of the bow and the design of the bow. This bow is created by United Cutlery. Of course, they get all of the props from the movie so they can cast the replicas and make very accurate replicas. The bow has a nice green hue and some great detailing we'll get into in the more detailed up close review. You can buy this bow on castlecon.com. It retails for $417, but we sell it for only $215 US dollars. Remember, international buyers, we do ship outside of the US, so be sure to check us out at www.castlecon.com. Now, for an up-close review, let's get to it. So I actually wanted to take some time and really show off the plaque here, because I really think that United outdid themselves this time. The plaque has an overall leaf shape, a uh, little hard to see. Let's back it up a little bit. Um, maybe show the back. The back, you can clearly see that's kind of a leaf shape, of course. So you've got that, the elven leaf that has been a nice motif throughout all of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Of course, the paint job on this is absolutely gorgeous. We have kind of a bronze or copper tone all the way around, and then it has a yellowish green, lime green in the middle. When I first saw this plaque, I just, I couldn't believe that how nice it was compared to, you know, all the other uh, wooden plaques with the screen printing looks really good, but this is just very different and very nice. Of course, we've got uh, kind of a triple diamond here and a little pyramid, absolutely beautiful there. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. There we go, so you can see that in focus. So that's very nice. And this plaque actually displays both the bow, which goes in the main socket here, and the arrow, which goes up here. So it is absolutely gorgeous, I love it, and I cannot wait to hang it on the armory wall. All right, so here we have the tip of the arrow. It is kind of has that jagged or thorn look of a rose bush or something like that. Its coloration is a yellow, tan, and kind of green wood grain going down uh, the length of the arrow shaft. It is very nice, very natural looking. Uh, we have a slight textured uh, silver or gray material here. Uh, of course, this all the entire arrow is resin, including the fletching. So all of the metallic parts as well aren't metal, but they are resin. And this is textured, so it almost seems some, like some type of a patterned steel. Of course, we have the notch as well in a silver and a gold, uh, gold coloring. And they do have a slight uh, blackened patina on them, so they're, they don't look brand new and shiny. Here we can see why poly resin is being used on a lot of the new prop replicas is because of, you can get this really close detail. So we have the, the faux feathers here that have the, the texture of real feathers. And we also have the, uh, I guess you'd say the strings or rope that would tie the feathers to the shaft underneath. And they go all the way down. And it has a very nice paint job where we've got the uh, kind of wood grain um, shaft underneath with the uh, kind of brown strings and then we have a few parts that are a little bit more patinaed and look 
worn and not so brand new. All right, here we have the bottom of the bow. We have the string groove right here, and we see that each bow is numbered. This is number 0551, and get a nice little look of the coloration here. Lots of beautiful colors. We got uh, different greens and blacks running through it, and the black kind of gives it that uh, wood grain effect that goes all the way through the bow. Uh, as Casey mentioned, this almost looks like some sort of a hoof, like a deer hoof or something, uh, some type of animal hoof. It, it's just a very natural look uh, towards the bottom of the bow. And here we can actually see uh, some of the scalloping, which we'll take a closer look at right now. All right, so here is the first real example of this scallop design that runs all the way through the bow that we'll see later on. Uh, you know, I don't know how you might describe it, kind of maybe leaves, or to me it almost looks like kind of like a mushroom design, the way it's patterned and it is uh, where the bow is green, uh, we have the silver etching, the silver painted etching, and this is a little bit more of a brown tone, so it just kind of reminds me, brown or bronze, yeah, it's got, it's got a nice little shimmer to it, so brown or bronze tone uh, kind of just reminds me of um, uh, kind of like a mushroom design. So one of the negatives I would say about the bow is uh, it's very minimal, but uh, all the bows are hand painted. So we actually see on the silver lining, we will see some variation in the paint. We actually see a little uh, gap in the paint right there. Uh, there's not very many of these throughout the entire bow. It's just a slight variation in that paint. Not too bad, I can touch that up with uh, just a little bit of miniature paint. And this is the flip side of the uh, string groove here and we'll see uh, three more of these kind of mushroomy scal scallops and uh, kind of the back end of what we had just seen. Again, silver paint, very nice on the edges. A uh, couple of places where it could be touched up, still not a very big deal, but still absolutely gorgeous. And of course, I uh, didn't mention it before, but we do have a very nice uh, kind of uh, green colored, kind of sage green and uh, colored uh, bowstring here. Um, I think it's, I believe it looks like it's nylon or some sort of polyester. Absolutely gorgeous, matches the bow perfectly. I really do like that. So I actually took away one of my uh, spotlights here to give you a, a slightly different uh, look of the color here. Definitely this beautiful uh, dark olive green tone on the bow and you can really see the black um, etching, or not etching, but the black brush strokes that make it look like that, that wood grain there. So this is the front part of the bow. We have the uh, hand grip right here, of course. Everything is molded in the resin. This isn't leather. Um, and we have the uh, curve of the bow right there. And we do see the scallops on the back end. We'll get to that in a moment. But very nice, very nice coloring indeed. Uh, and I really like the overall shape of the bow and how it looks here. Let's do a close up of the handle right now. So when I first looked at this, I totally thought it was real leather. Uh, Excellent, excellent job with the way the uh, the resin cast came out. The texturing very much looks like kind of a an older leather that uh, needs to have some conditioning on it. And um, these stitches are actually not real stitches. They are painted on. Um, a couple of them are a little crooked, but uh, absolutely gorgeous all the way. Uh, definitely from afar, you can't even notice it. You really do have to get really close up. But uh, this uh, this hand grip has a uh, you know the two or three colors of greens running through the center and then goes uh, more brown toned with the, uh, those are white or stitches and, um, and so a little bit darker out here with some uh, darker brown. And here we see the other side of the uh, hand grip here that looks like leather. We have this cross stitching that goes all the way down in a in that white paint, the same as the stitches here. And we have interesting, uh, very, very dark forest green. Um, in most light, this actually looks black, but this is a very, very dark green. Uh, not sure if it's just a design thing of, uh, um, if they have, I can't imagine they'd have any function other than maybe like a, a nice thumb grip right there. And lastly, here we can see the most prevalent place where we see the kind of this mushroom or scallop design or feather or leaf. Uh, again, very nice. It has got this shimmering uh, gold bronze uh, paint that is of course patinaed out towards the edges and the silver trim on the outside. We've got a lot of these all the way from this uh, dark green tab I was just talking about all the way down 
the uh, bow and we see it goes to about there. So overall, what do I think about this bow? Well, to be honest with you, I bought two of these bows, one for a customer and one just so I could check it out myself. I wasn't intending on keeping it, but when I opened it up, I absolutely fell in love with it. How would I rate Tariel's bow? Well, the last couple ratings I've been giving her have been a little vague, right? Between an 8 and 9, about a 9. I'm an engineer. We need to be precise here, right? I rated a 9.473 out of 10. I love this bow. It's gorgeous. A few couple cons, which I talked about in the detailed review, of course. Uh, I've got a couple small paint details. It's a hand-painted prop, so there's going to be some variation. And the bow is, indeed, resin and not functional. It'd be absolutely perfect if it was functional, 10 out of 10, but we're talking about replicas here, and I love to have this on my wall. Although some may not like Tariel's character, that's no reason why I can't love this absolutely gorgeous bow, and it would make a fine addition to anyone's armory as a good elven piece. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and the video, and comment down below with your favorite elven character, whether it's from the books or the movies. Legolas, Tariel, Thranduil, Fingolfin, Let's talk about it. Until next time, guys.